This is an Eye on Annapolis special update. Hello? Dr. Calamara in. Hey, John. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I, it took me a few more minutes. I was just trying to get to a landline for a better connection. So. Not not a problem, and I don't know why my phone, my phone didn't ring, but it uh, it did. But I uh, I want to thank you for taking some time, and uh, if you can get about ten minutes of your time, we'll we'll go on this. And I'm going to try not to duplicate anything that was um, covered in the uh, in the town hall. Joining us on the phone is Doctor Nilesh Kailanaraman. How are you today? Uh, that's a, that, good, that's 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 a stupid question. Let's not. <laughs> let's, let's not. <laughs> Uh, but I'll tell you, you know, we spoke the day prior to Governor Hogan's press conference announcing all the different actions that the state is taking um, as we work our way through this COVID-19 virus. And you are the point guy here in Anne Arundel County, and we all should know the basics. But I wanted to sort of follow up on our conversation um, since we're kind of in this new normal for now kind of phase. And there, there are a lot of questions. Um, but Right, right now, and you know, for clarity's sake, it's about one p.m. on Saturday, the fourteenth. What's the status here in Anne Arundel County? What are the numbers of people that have been diagnosed with the COVID seven COVID nineteen? Mm -hmm. uh, where do we so, stand? Yeah, at, at this time, we have uh, we have two people who are diagnosed in in Anne Arundel County. Um, there are. We we strongly suspect that there are more. We know that we do. We don't, and we know that because there's community spread, meaning that we have cases in Maryland where people got it from going about their daily activities, and so uh, that's how we are responding to this. Not as isolated cases, but as it's out there in the community right now at a lower level, but it's growing, and that's why we're taking these steps. Well, I, I tell you, I know we. In the town hall, we talked about the testing kits and how to get tested and everything else. And there, it's not a secret that there's a shortage of testing kits nationwide. It is mm -hmm. uh, getting a little bit better. But, I mean, how serious – I mean, the, you mentioned people that are undiagnosed going around. I mean, how serious of a threat is that to people in their daily lives? Um, so that's a, that's a problem, and that's why we – you know, that's why we say that when – when you have any symptoms, whether it's the, the, the symptoms of COVID-19 or cough, sore throat, shortness of breath, or fever, stay home. You know, most of us push through, or maybe it's not that bad, and we say, whatever, we'll go about our daily business. But it's really important right now that you, you stay home or stay where you are and stay away from others so that it doesn't spread if you have symptoms. Um, that's the key thing, that key action that all of us can take. And, and again, I guess the best advice, advice, and we spoke about this last week when we spoke, but the if you feel you have some of the symptoms, the best thing is to call either the health department or your doctor to for, for, for further advice. Don't, don't be lopping into the emergency room or, you know, I want to see the doctor now type thing. Correct. And there's, there's, there's really two reasons for that. If your symptoms are mild uh, and you're, you're able to manage them at home, um, the two reasons are one, there isn't enough tests, and so we're really we're really having to prioritize those who are in the hospital or those who are uh, or more sick. Um, and second, if you're if you really aren't uh, if if you're if you have mild symptoms, going around uh, and and you know walking around, going to going to the doctor's office, you risk spreading it, and there really isn't that much for you to get other than the other than the knowledge of whether it's COVID nineteen or not. Um, there's not much more that can actually be done at that point. So that's why we're recommending people stay, stay where they are um, and, and call first before going somewhere if they can. Right. And what typically is the criteria needed to get tested? Um, I know at one point it was like, okay, you had to travel to China and, uh, you know, and you had to be right. rubbing, rubbing up against a person that had the COVID-19. So what, what is the criteria now to test it? And I mean, does the county have any plans for like maybe a, I know they've done it for the flu shots, but these uh, drive-through testing centers? So, so right now the criteria where we are is that if you have symptoms, any of the four symptoms I mentioned, um, then you're eligible to be tested. Once we have more tests, and you know we really don't know when it's going to happen, um, we we we're hopeful that it's it's sometime in the in the coming week, 
maybe two weeks, um, but that really depends on the federal supply. Um, but there's there's a question of if you have symptoms, those are the criteria for testing. But when we have limited tests, we have to reserve them for those more sick. So when we have more tests, we can we can test more and more people who have symptoms. Okay, and and in the in the town hall, you had mentioned too at what point that. You know, as this virus does grow, uh, I think you had mm-hmm. mentioned 50 to 80 percent of the population, you know, could reasonably be suffering from this in various forms, from something very minor and mild that you just sit at home for a week and, and deal with it to obviously hospitalization and breathing issues. But, um, you know, so we have we moved beyond where testing doesn't make all that much more sense. Is that sort of what I'm getting? Um Sort of and sort of not. So I just want to say about the 50 to 80. So the, the estimates are that at some point, 50 to 80 percent of the population will have COVID-19. Uh, our goal is to make that happen slowly enough that we can handle it. Um, you can imagine the difference between 50 to 80 percent getting it over the course of two months versus getting it over the course of six, eight or 12 months. Um, so that's the difference that we're really trying to uh, try to affect. Um, now, you know, what, what we, what we want to do is we, what we want to do is make sure that testing is done for those who need it. We know that whenever, whenever we have situations like this with COVID-19 or flu, we know that there's some number of people with mild disease who never get tested. That's okay. Um, we have, we have ways to estimate the population of people who are getting, who have mild disease based on the number of people with moderate or severe disease. So right now, the big problem is that we can't test everybody with moderate or severe disease, so our numbers are underaccounted. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, and I, again, I realize that the government has some limited powers to do, to say what I can and cannot do. And mm-hmm. I mean, we've canceled events over 250 here throughout the state. Schools have been closed and whatnot. And they, they're flexing their muscles a little bit on that for a good thing. Um, mm-hmm. what, ge- but I've been getting a lot of emails and questions is, you know, just what are the general practices? I mean, how does somebody go about their daily lives on this? You know, mm-hmm. should we stay at home? I know that, um, both, uh, Dr. Arlotta from the school system and, uh, County Executive Pittman said, you know, go out, get out, enjoy the parks, enjoy your families. But, mm-hmm. you know, I'm hearing people saying like, oh my gosh, it's, you know, it's the COVID, like it's the bubonic plague that's out there. And what what is the recommendation? Should we stay at home if we are asymptomatic? Should we, uh, or should we try to, you know, live our lives? Right. So if if you are asymptomatic, the the issue isn't whether you're inside or outside. It's who you're coming into contact with and how many people you're coming into contact with. Um, and that's why we're talking about parks um, and and wide open spaces. It's, you can be in those spaces and not be in close contact with other people. So that's a really ideal way to, uh, to, to get outside. Um, you know, we know that people need to need to take their care of their, uh, of their daily activities, you know, whether that's grocery shopping, they got to buy some clothes, but what we're really recommending is if you minimize the number of times that you do that, you know, a good example is if, if you can go to the grocery once instead of three times this week, that just reduces the number of people there, right? Sure. And it means that we have fewer of those interactions and slow down the spread. Um, you know, one of the things we talked about was eating out. There is a financial impact on those businesses. But if you take out or delivery, I know it's not the same thing as going out, um, but you do, get, you do get to have the food and you get to uh, minimize that contact once again. So it's, it's more thinking about ways to not to eliminate everything, but to really change and significantly change how you how you do those, take care of those activities so that you decrease contact between people. So is like the dinner parties and game nights maybe at a neighbor's house. Uh, I look at, plan, I mean, we've got a lot of churches in town that are certainly less than 250 people, so they don't fall under the governor's orders. I mean, what are the situations there? I mean, do we sit you know, arm's length away from each other in pews in a church, or can family units sit together? Uh, you know, when you're when you're dining out, I mean, are, are am I expected to sit six foot away from? Not expected, but I mean, encouraged to sit six foot away from my son, or can? So we, so, so 
So family members, people in the household, we those are people who are going to have regular close contact, and that's that's really not the issue. Um, it, it's more of just trying to minimize um, those contacts with people with, with other people who, who are not as close to you, right? Um, and minimize the number of people you do that with. So you know, one of the things that we talked about is that if you're if you're um, if you're going out. Or if you're going to church, let's say you're gonna you're, you can sit with your family, but you want other families or other individuals sitting six feet away from from all of you, okay. right? Um, and I know that I, I we, you know we're hearing from different churches and houses of worship about um, different approaches to this um, and different ways to different ways to get at how do we keep people further apart, um, and and so it's it, it's that sort of creativity of thinking about how can we how can we bend what we're doing to, to create greater distance. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So, and I know that, you know, I don't know whether you realize this or not, it may have happened when you guys were on the town hall, but I know Apple sent out a, uh, a notice saying that they are closing all their stores worldwide, at least for two weeks. Um, which is, I did not hear that. which is, which is kind of, kind of interesting. It's kind of a, uh, you know, sort of a good social statement from a, you know, a BMF, uh, undoubtedly Apple's got the money to, to weather that storm, but that's you know, neither, right. neither here nor there. Um, well, um, but that's but that that brings up something important that the that the county executive did talk about is that for larger businesses who can businesses who have the ability to to take some of these actions that we encourage to, them to do it um, precisely to give space to the smaller businesses that don't have that flexibility um, and who who don't have as much discretion. Well, that makes sense. And something on the town hall that you guys had mentioned, which makes a lot of sense. And, you know, let's face it, small businesses here in Annapolis are are going to be struggling. I was actually I went to breakfast at the main and market and typically I have to wait for a table. And it it was a ghost town this morning. Mm. And, the, you know, the, the servers were all talking about this and everything else. So, you know, get get in there and, if, you know, buy a gift card and, you know, some, and and use it later if you're feeling sick. You know, maybe have somebody go out and get you a gift card and bring it, you know, just to continue to help our small businesses, because, I mean, these are our neighbors and these are the people that really need the help as well. Um, as I said, Apple probably doesn't need a whole lot of help with the $29 <laughs> billion dollars they have. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's probably an underestimate. But uh, do that. I mean, and just I guess as a good practice, I mean, avoid things like, I mean, casinos tend to be fairly crowded and I know that they still remain open as well. Um, mm-hmm. at, at this point. So I would think that that's probably good advice. Uh, and I know you don't want to get into a position of saying, yes, don't go someplace or any place, but, you know, places with large crowds would be a good advice just to sort of avoid that. Right. Yeah, no, I, I, I am in a place to say that, you know, that that's part of what we need to do. Uh, each of us individually is try to avoid those, those spaces. And the more of us that, that do that, the, the slower the spread. Right. Um, and, and, and as, as we go sort of, sort of wind down here, I know that so many events have been canceled and, you know, people are now looking into April to cancel events and so on and so forth. The County has, uh, and, and many have others, but I'll pick on the County because you guys are kind of neutral, but you guys have two events coming up in September and October. You've got the twist and stout, which is a wine and beer festival at quiet waters park and the lifeline 100, which is this bicycle, uh, century ride in October. How far out should organizers at this point, do you feel, be concerned and considering saying, hey, I think I need to cancel this? I mean, obviously, something that's going on this weekend, is, it's a fairly large event that needs to go, uh, probably something next weekend and, and beyond. But I mean, do people that have events scheduled, you know, the the business association is doing uh, Midnight Madness in next December. Is that does that need to be on their radar? So we're right now advocating through the end of April, um, and then our approach is that uh, in the beginning of April we'll look to see what the landscape looks like, uh, the health land, public health landscape looks like, um, because we don't want to we don't want to cancel it so far out, right? A lot of people's jobs and and recreation and so on and so forth depends on this. Um, and so we're trying to find that balance of what's far out enough to, to give people a little bit of certainty, but not too far out that um, that everything is just canceled. So right now we're looking at like four to six week windows uh, as we go along to try to make those decisions. That's fair enough. And that's very similar to what Dr. Arlotto had said in the town hall about the schools. I mean, right now they're closed for two weeks and the, I mean, he seemed to be fairly, uh, 
I don't say confident, but he, he left it out there that, hey, this could go much longer and they are prepared for it as as needed. So, um, you know, the two weeks that were that I hear a lot of the parents going, oh, no, what am I going to do for two weeks with the kids home? And well, it may be a lot longer than that. And we're all going to have to sort of readjust as needed. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard. It absolutely is difficult. Well, I, I do have to say that you talked about, I remember when we first met, I came in there and I, my hand was out and it was promptly met by your fist saying, Hey man, we don't shake hands here. We fist bump. And, and I asked you how, how do you get out of that habit? And, and you gave me a great, great bit of advice and you, I sort of took it a little bit on my own, but you said, think about how you are going to introduce or talk to interact with somebody when you have to meet them in advance of it. And I was like, Okay, well, if I was going to meet the queen, I would have to say, "Oh, hello, your majesty." And and that's just sort of my that's just sort of my little thing that that I'm I'm going in. It's like, "Okay, so I'm going to meet, oh, okay, so this is my girlfriend. I'm going to give her a hug and a kiss. This is my uh best friend. I may, may slap him on the back. And uh, this is a guy that I saw 3 months ago. Well, he gets the fist bump. Um, you know, so it's it's it was spot yeah. on to sit there and just before you get into any interaction say, "Hey, how am I going to start this conversation?" And that that helped me. Um, but looking into your, what's happening in Europe, and I mean, we're somewhat following what has happened there to a degree, hopefully not to the degree that it is. But right now, Italy is, has mandatory quarantines. They've closed down most of the stores except for groceries and, uh, uh, and pharmacies. And I know Mayor Buckley yesterday mentioned that in the council meeting that the Pitmore Rec Center, um, part of the reason that it's being – closed and also um, sterilized and, and disinfected and everything else is that that is an emergency evacuation site in case of a hurricane or anything like this. And obviously it would serve as a quarantine site if we ever were to get to that point. Um, and I, I know the county is prepared for that and you have the Annapolis High School and all these other things, but that's typically for a quick, oh gosh, I hate to say that, like a quick, quick emergency. I mean, a lot of people will get out of town for a hurricane. Uh, a lot of you know, you're not looking at entire populations having mm-hmm. to go go to a high school gym. And has there been, do you know whether there have been conversations on all levels, and that would be, you know, local, state, and county, and, and federal, um, of looking at hotels and universities and dorms? I mean, because I would think hotels and dorms would be ideal for, um, mm-hmm. you know, to house, if, if all of a sudden Anne Arundel County needs to house 10,000 people mm-hmm. in quarantine, um, mm-hmm. You know, we, you know, we've got a couple of good hotels at BWI that can handle that. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you know, right. whether, do you know whether those conversations yeah. have had? Okay. So, so the, these, these are, these are the kind of things that we routinely, um, that we, we routinely use, uh, do as sort of, as part of our emergency preparedness. Um, I, and I, I, we've been talking about both the, uh, uh, Annap- Annapolis and the Anne Arundel, uh, emergency management. Um, and so these types of plans are part of it. One thing that's a little bit different about this is that we generally want to keep space between people, right? Um, so one of the one of the kind of principles of quarantine is that uh, is that you're keeping people isolated from everybody else. Um, and so that's part of how we have to think about, you know, were we to use any of these these types of large uh, large buildings? How do we keep everybody away from everybody else? Um, and so that's part of what emergency preparedness does. So yes, we've been thinking about this. Okay. Okay. And, and again, we've talked that this may be going on for 12 months or longer. And I mean, you were sort of alluded said, Hey, it's much easier to deal with the population of Maryland, fit 80% of the population dealing with this over a year, as opposed to a month, uh, health, health wise. Um, but so if this is going to be here for a while, or as it appears to be, Walk mm-hmm. us through. What is what is the virus? I mean, how if you if you have the virus, I mean, how are you feeling? I mean, I know the flu. I mean, it comes on like a train. It hits you, and you have no energy, and the whole nine yards. I mean, what does it feel like? What are the symptoms, and you know, your home treatments for it if you're able to be treated at home? Yeah. So the um, so the the virus, the symptom, the virus is actually in the uh, in in the family of coronaviruses, which cause a lot of the colds uh, that we see. This is a particularly dangerous type, and the symptoms of the COVID-19 are uh, cough, sore throat, fever, or shortness of breath. And so as long as your symptoms are mild and you're able to care for yourself, uh, over-the-counter medications like cough, cough medications, Tylenol or uh, ibuprofen or Aleve or stuff like that, 
works and you're able to do what you need to do to take care of yourself, that's fine. Uh, it's really when you're not able to manage when your fevers are going on for 48 to 72 hours, um, or particularly when you have shortness of breath, is when you really need to think about seeking, uh, seeking medical attention. Um, there are no vaccines at this time. There's no treatment at this time. Uh, there, is, there is work being done on a medication to see if it's going to be effective uh, in treating this, but it's not really available at this time because we don't know if it works or not. Um, so that's really the that's really the state. You know, this is this is kind of a supercharged uh, cold slash flu that's really dangerous. And so it's a lot of the same a lot of the same kind of things that you do uh, that you've been doing um, that'll that'll help with the symptoms for this as well. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Well. Uh, on the phone with us is Dr. Nilesh Kailanaraman. He is the Anne Arundel County Health Officer. And you guys have established a warm line, and that is 410-222-7256. And that hours are 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. So people can call there with questions, right? Absolutely. That could, I, I'm actually sitting just a, just a few feet down the hall from them right now, and they're taking calls as we speak. Fantastic. Well, I am not going to ask you to prognosticate as we wrap up and give us a look into the future because that's not fair to you. But um, any final words or sage advice or tips for Anne Arundelins to keep them safe? Uh, how to move on? Uh, yeah. So, you know, the, the big things that we talk about is uh, staying home when you're sick or staying where you are, washing your hands with soap and water. And using soap and water as much as possible and, and, and reserving the uh, hand sanitizer for situations where there is no soap and water available, covering your cough and sneeze. And I think the biggest one is remembering that these, the, these changes we're talking about, social distancing, they're hard, but they're necessary. And they're the actions that each of us can take to help decrease the spread of this disease. Fantastic. Well, I'll tell you again, the best place to keep up to date advice uh, right from the horse's mouth is aahealth.org, which is the Anne Arundel County Health Department's website, or you can go to the state's website, which is health.md.gov. And again, the warm line for the Anne Arundel County Health Department is 410 222 7256. And again, I want to thank Dr. Nilesh Kalanaraman here for contacting us right off of the uh, town hall just to give us a little bit more of an update. I will let you get back to the busy work of trying to figure out what the hell we're going to do with this thing. <laughs> Good talking to you, John. Thank you. Thanks. This has been an update from Eye on Annapolis. Please visit us at ionanapolis.net. Follow us on Twitter at Eye on Annapolis. And be sure to subscribe to our daily news brief podcast, which is delivered every Monday through Friday to your phone or device at 7 a.m.